What is going on, everybody? My name's Giraffe Anatomy, and this is another Smite Quick God Guide. Today, the god we will be taking a look at is Kubraken, the destroyer of mountains. Broken, in other words. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do today is just go over Kubraken's abilities, uh, his kit, how they kind of synergize with each other, how to use him, and hopefully the goal of this video is if you've never played him before, after watching it, you should be able to take Kabraken into an arena, conquest, joust, slash, uh, any kind of game mode, and be able to use him effectively and know how to use him right away, right? So without further ado, let's get into jungle practice. And we will pick Kabraken. I know Kamazots has the Macho Man Randy Savage skin, but I've always thought of Kabraken as uh, the big boy. Cool. So Kabraken, in case you guys didn't know, is a support uh, and a guardian uh, within Smite. So his main role that he's designed for is the support role. Uh, but as a guardian, which is a short-ranged magical damage dealer, he's able to flex into some other roles. Uh, even though he was built and designed for the support role and his passive in his kit does a really good job of CCing, locking down enemies, helping out your teammates with setups, um, you actually can see him a lot in solo lane as a uh, basically like a magical solo laner or even in the jungle. There are one shot Kabraken builds where if you build full damage on him, you do a ton of damage and can kill squishies real fast. Um, Polynomicon works really well with him because of the way he's sort of designed to get up in your face, hit you, stun you. He's autoing through that whole thing. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's get into his kit and his basic abilities first. Then we can kind of talk about how to build him and the different kind of roles he can play. So first we'll talk about his passive. I'm going to level everything up here while I do that. So Kabraken's passive is very simple. Shadow Zone. Kabraken and nearby allies take 5% reduced damage. That's it. Not really much to it. You're getting reduced damage. Your allies are getting reduced damage. If I change teams here real quick, I will show you what this looks like. So you have to be within like a, a few units. Um, you know, you can get like a few different people. Anybody within this sort of range will get this buff from him. Um, so just if you are ever wondering, are, am I applying the, you know, the 5% Reduce damage, like flat damage reduction. That's not protections, that's not any, it's damage reduction. So even true damage, 5% reduced damage all across the board. That's what happens with Kabrak, and that's why he's a good support, because he provides this buff in the team fights. Um, and if you're ever wondering, am I applying this? Just look at their feet, and you will see uh, that little Mayan marking under them. That will let you know, hey, the buff is being applied to them. So let's talk about Kabrakin's first ability here. And his first ability is called Seismic Crush. Kabraken becomes enraged, increasing his movement speed. While active, Kabraken gains 70% increased attack speed, and his next successful basic attack will stun with no diminishing returns and do bonus damage. Additionally, Kabraken gains haste and is immune to slows and roots while this ability is active, right? So first of all, it does damage. If you pop this ability and hit somebody with it, it will do damage and it looks like this when you pop it he basically takes his shields out and he's glowing you can see the timer on it there that's how long you have to hit somebody with it to apply this damage this stun all of these things the movement speed increase gets applied right away so it you see how he's running here you apply it see how much faster i am that's the movement speed and obviously i'm i have it maxed out already it's already at 35 percent it starts at 15 percent movement speed increase goes to 35 when you have it uh max all the way right um the other thing is normally my autos are like this but when you activate this they turn into this they're a lot faster so you get that opportunity to try and hit somebody with it um and then the next time you hit anything so this also includes a buff this includes minions so you got to be careful it's hard to fight in the middle of a wave and do this and it you can accidentally hit a minion and then you end up hitting the minion with this instead of the target god that you're trying to do so just be careful when they're using this um but this is what it looks like when you hit an enemy god you can run up to them hit them they're stunned right um so you'll see the damage done the 260 damage the stun duration is one second there's no diminishing returns on this so you can do this after you've already done some sort of stun with them 
and they will still be stunned for the full one second. Um, this is really good because diminishing returns can happen if, you know, Ymir, say Ymir hits them with a two, they get slowed, and then he freezes them, and they're frozen. If you hit them with another CC, normally that CC is going to be reduced in time because they've already been CC'd two, three times already. Cabracken's one will still damage or will still stun them for a full one second, no matter what, period. So you're able to, even after like a Ymir freeze, walk up to them and hit them, and they'll still be stunned for that full one second afterwards because it has no diminishing returns on it. Um, this is a great chase down tool, right? The 70% increase attack speed is just until you hit the next target. Just to show you guys real quick. Be careful when in the wave because as soon as you hit anything that's an enemy, it goes away, right? Um, it is used up. So just be careful what you're aiming at when you are uh, using his one. So let's talk about Gabrakin's second ability. So Gabrakin's second ability is called Refraction Shield. It has a passive, and that's actually what this passive meter is because uh, his actual passive is the 5% reduced damage. His meter is showing the this, the refraction shield. And what this is, is when Cabracken takes damage, they store energy and gain protection stacks, right? And you can see down at the bottom, there's two, three, four, five, and then a six protections. And then you max it at five stacks. So really quickly, just because these guys won't attack me, I'm going to go over here and just mess with some minions. And you'll see if you're getting damaged by anything, this includes minions, right you see these shields glowing right that is the stack happening all right and so when that happens it will last for a certain amount of time and then it goes down look at my protections here i get hit once six twelve right that's two uh three eighteen four five right once it's fully stacked you get these extra protections when you're getting damaged so sometimes it's a good idea to do that because we're going to talk about the second part of this ability um which is after you, you get this during the active, which is actually using it, right? Using the ability, that's what the active is. Active, Gabrakin slams his shields together, cre cre creating a concussive blast and damaging enemies in front of him. If his shields have maximum number of stacks, then the enemy gods hit are stunned. Stacks are removed. So just to let you know, this is what his ability looks like by itself. If you come up here with no stacks and you hit it, they're not gonna get stunned. They'll still be damaged, that's fine, but you won't be getting these protections per stack and you won't get a stun duration, which is a 1.5 second stun duration when it's fully maxed, right? If you are able to build up these um, protections, I'll show you real quick with Guan Yu. So normally, if I hit him, he's not stunned, right? But as I build these up, right? So now I have the full protections. I might have to stack them again. Yeah, I, I will have to stack them again. So as I stack these protections up, right? Once I get to full, when I hit this again, see how he's stunned for 1.5 seconds? Then if I go into this, he's stunned for a full one second again with my one, right? That's a good combo to do because your one doesn't have the diminishing returns. A lot of the time it is your chase down. So, you know, you can't really do much about it. But um, yeah, if you get these stacked and if you're keeping a close eye on this while you're doing damage, you can use your two at the proper time to then stun the enemy with that hit. So you kind of have two stuns in your kit. If you play this right and you get those six, six stacks in the middle of a fight and somebody's attacking you, wait for yourself to get the full stacks, you'll get the stun on them, and it'll be very easy to use your one or your three or even your alt on them um, after you do that. Um, so that that's the basics of this, right? You're getting protections as you're getting hit. It'll stack those five times. When it's stacked five and it's stacked fully, you will do a stun when you hit somebody with it. Uh, pretty simple. So let's get into Cabracken's third ability, Tremors. Cabracken repeatedly slams the ground with his shields, creating an earthquake and causing enemy gods around him to tremble. Enemies in the earthquake also take damage and are caught in a vortex which drags them towards Cabracken. This ability can only be channeled for a maximum amount of 10 seconds. So you do flat damage per uh, hit, basically, right? And it's every 0.5 seconds and it can go on for 10 seconds. Um, and what it looks like is this. You basically have an area around Cabracken, and as you hit it, you cause tremors, right? And tremors means the gods get all wonky and stuff, right? And you can see how he's kind of pulled towards me, right? See how he's kind of just like spinning around and stuff? Um, yeah, 
so gods could definitely get uh it throws people off it's a really good team fight tool because if you get in the middle of all of them and you have a ton of protections it's gonna be hard to kill you um and then if you're trembling everyone and you're like mage is throwing in damage and your adc's autoing them they're gonna have a hard time trying to get out of that especially if they don't have movement abilities up and things like that now one thing is you can get stunned out of this ability especially if you play Cabrak in, in solo lane or something like that this is uh normally the what you'll get like around level one to clear the wave very fast um and gods have the ability to stun you out of this right uh, if they have a stun in their kit the thing is this is up so often that you can normally make them make like make them stun you and then have it up again to clear wave really fast so if you're in solo lane you should normally get this uh ability first and you can get up to the wave and what you can do is you pull them all together right and you basically do this as long as you can and if they stun you out of it it's only a second seven second cooldown right um and once it comes back up you're able to use it again and normally it's up before other warriors or guardians have their abilities up to get you out of it again right um the other thing is you can use this to clear wave and although you get this as your first ability most of the time to help clear wave um once you clear wave you normally want to gather them up and then start leveling your two to start clearing things and, and doing stuff and your two is what you normally level first um you can level this or or i know a lot of supports that'll level this first just to get the increased movement speed to be able to chase people down um so it depends on what role you're playing him what you're going to level first this is great for the movement speed increase i'll see jungles and uh solo laners um or sorry jungles and supports level this more um like these will be the priority over tremors like they'll leave tremors at level one for a pretty long time um sometimes the supports will will get the tremors but really you can use this at at level one um and then you can start leveling your two and your one as you see fit if you want to be doing more damage you're going to be leveling your two so as solo laners you're probably going to level this first and try and max this out first and then this um as a jungler sometimes the movement speed is really good with this and getting that up faster you're able to chase people down and by then by the time you have this maxed out you have something like polynomicon online and so you're basically able to like chase down enemies like look at how fast i am chasing him down right so you'll be able to chase them down and get that stun off of them and do your two on them right so um, they'll level these and you guys can prioritize it on if you want like the movement speed and to be able to chase down and stun um, For follow-up so a lot of supports will level this first to be able to chase somebody down So their ADCs or their mages or their jungles can follow up and kill them um, Or if you want the two this is basically you clearing stuff you doing more damage in general, right? Ask a bracken um, So yeah, so those are his three main abilities. Um, really what you're doing as Combracken you're bi <laughs> If you're a support, you're building um, very tanky, and there are items on him that make him really good when it comes to the chase down, right? So chasing down, you're normally going to engage with your one first, run up to the person you want to hit, one them, auto them, two them, auto, and then start trembling them so they can't get away. And you're going to do something like this, and you're going to have your team following up on them, right? And you will do a lot of damage just with those abilities. Um, sometimes, like I said, if you're getting attacked first, and you have the stun available with the two, you can do that. Um, so hold on a second. So if they are doing a ton of damage to you, right? You can actually start it. Once it's stacked, two, auto, one, auto. Look at how long he's, he was CC'd for. He was sitting there for like two, 2.5 seconds, right? Um, so yeah, you're able to really utilize this effectively. Two again, right? one and this is without any cooldown right i'm able to get most of these abilities off here um and then you're just using your three if he can stun you out of it great like i said before when he stuns you out of it you can normally have it back up before that ability that stuns you uh is out because it has a pretty short cooldown on it um so yeah so let's talk about his ultimate ability so Cabracken's ultimate ability is tectonic shift Cabracken stomps the ground creating a wall of earth and a fissure that travels out in front of him and damages any enemies caught in its path. The walls may be destroyed if they take enough damage hits. Cabracken may destroy his own walls with a single basic attack. Um, so normally it's um, like three or so hits for each one. Like enemies can auto them down um, to get rid of them. But you yourself can, can break them down. And this ability looks like this. Um, so when you come up to somebody, if they are anywhere within this 
they're going to take damage, right? Um, and then if you get them within this box, between you and this box, you'll see real quick, right? They get trapped by these. And so to go around, they literally would have to go all the way around. Now, enemies can auto this, but you yourself, one basic, and you can walk right through, right? So it's harder for enemies to break through this, but you can get rid of them if you want. Um, but yeah, so not only are you going to do that initial damage to them, right? 550 um, once you get it leveled up to uh, like level 5, once you're like level 20 basically. Um, but this is also a really great trapping and takedown tool, right? So with Kabraken, the way you kind of utilize his ult is you kind of want to like press 1 to chase somebody down, alt them, 1 them, hit them, 2 them, right? And then tremble them. And normally they'll they'll still be in here or, or trying to get out, right? And you'll be able to create this zone that is very hard for them to get out of. Um, so that's basically like your full kit combo right there. You can start by alting them. You can blink and alt them, right? Uh, blink is very good on Kabrakin. Let's start getting into some items that we'll talk about with him. Um, so you can basically surprise them by doing like a blink, ultimate, do the two, do the one, right? Uh, depends on if you have the stacks or not. If you don't have the stacks, probably do the one first then do the two um just to confirm the stun after you alt them um and then you basically go into your three after you've dumped most of your stuff remember to be getting basics in you're gonna auto between most of his abilities and you're going to be doing a lot of damage because of that like if you one him then auto then two then auto you're going to be doing more damage as you as you see fit um yeah those are basically his abilities right it's not complex he's not a complex god Kabraken shines the most um, as an initiator, as a chase down god. Um, guardians normally are meant to like peel and like support their mid laners and junglers. And you can do that with this kit, right? You can play still play passive with them. So you can be waiting for uh, like your mid lane to be dove. And then as they dive them, press your one and, and hit the enemy and then two them and three them. And your mid laner can start chucking damage as he's running away right he's still good for that i think he shines the most as the instigator in team fights as like the setup as a chase down tool right um for initiating that fight like if a cabrecan if you pick the right target right if you pick somebody without a movement ability or something like a raw or an anubis and you're like all right guys i'm gonna go in on anubis and you literally like blink one him auto like do like alt do this and like that he's not getting out of this like anubis can't jump out of this he can't do out of this all he's going to try and do is out damage you but if you have your team following up on this he's not going to be able to do anything right um so that's how i think he is used the best blink is really good on him just to close that gap really fast but even without blink he has great chase down potential with his one right you can one and outrun a lot of people even jungles with speed buff uh it sometimes no matter what they're building even if they build like full blades sometimes you can catch up to these guys especially if you yourself build a little bit of movement speed so let's talk about some builds that are really great on him um if you're going to go guardian obviously you're going to get something like sentinel's gift and like a gun like thieves to start but um stone abiding is still a good option for him um and you'll see this more like in a solo lane and kind of like a hybrid but the passive on this um, successfully hitting an enemy god with crowd control will place a debuff on the enemy, reducing their magical and physical protections by 10 for 5 seconds. Um, this is really great just because all your stuff, right? If you're autoing 52, 52, 52, and you auto them, now it's 56, 56, 56, because they have that debuff, right? You see that? Um, the same thing with uh, if you can stun them with your uh, passive on your two, right? If you get this five stacks and you stun them with your two, you're gonna apply the same debuff to them, right? So if you do this, see how they they have that little shiny glow? They're getting that stone or binding uh, passive on them. And the same thing with this. Trembles apply this debuff. They're going to be taking that extra, uh, they're gonna have that the reduced magical and physical protections, right? So you can get something like this early and be able to chunk enemies. Um, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, so it's a it's a pretty decent item to try and like get the upper hand if you and your team are aggressive and you can utilize it well. It's like, hey, I can strip them of their protections, that kind of stuff, right? Um, but that's just like a kind of like a side item that just works well with his kit because all three of his abilities at some point can activate it, right? Um, so it's really great in tremors. It, you're kind of just adding that extra thing when you're tremoring a couple of the teammates. Um, but you'll probably get something like this um, and then you'll want to start getting like hybrids of cooldown and stuff but 
Things like Relic Dagger work really well on him. Relic Dagger because you're getting 350 health, 10% cooldown reduction, crowd control reduction, and you're getting the movement speed. And your relics like Blink will be up much more often. So you're able to use things like Blink. Um, you can get things like Horrific Emblem with him, which is you're, even, you're slowing enemy gods even more. You can get things like Sprint to help your team get into or out of a fight. Um, you can do Belt of Frenzy, like things like that. But you'll be able to use these more often, right? Um, as Kabrakin, if you're getting something like Relic Dagger. Other items that are good, things like Winged Blade or Witch Blade, if they have a lot of auto attackers, Witch Blade is a really good item on him. It's adding that cooldown reduction because you want some cooldown on him to be able to just like, get through these abilities at least like 20%, try and shoot for on Kabrakin, um, if not 30 or 40, right? Because um, you'll be able to really get your abilities out. Your abilities are already sort of on a shorter cooldown, but at, um, so if you see, like that's 13, that's like a 10. You had a little bit of cooldown on here, right? And all of a sudden, these cooldowns go to 11 and 8, basically, right? So a couple seconds off of each one, you'll be able to have them up more often. Um, so that's a 20% cooldown. So things like these are really, really good because it adds the movement speed. If they have more than two auto attackers, um, like an auto attacking jungle, an ADC, and maybe like a mage that like Olo run or something like that in mid lane, get something like Witchblade. You'll do a lot of um, anti attack speed for them, get the cooldown, get some movement speed. Um, things like Genji's Guard are good on him. Um, you can do things like Pestilence, obviously, if you they need anti heal. Sovereignty, like typical support stuff, right? You would get uh, Sovereignty a little bit earlier if you're going to get it, right? Like probably like third item or something like that. Um, Pridwin isn't too bad for him as as well, just because um, when you alt, right, you're going to have uh, that shield pop, and you normally are able to like keep them in here with you with the tremors and stuff. So when the shield pops, um, you know you're going to be able to get that extra little damage from Pridwin out of there and stuff like that with its passive. Right when it explodes, deals magic damage equal to seventy five percent of the shield's initial health all that stuff right so uh because of your tremors after you alt and like one them and stuff they should still be within range um when that shield goes off or you could alt them uh do a little bit of tremors save your one for chase down right if you alt them um you're using the tremors and they're trying to get out and you see that they might be getting out right chase them down with the one stun them that shield will eventually go off make sure you alt first obviously to get the pridwin passive um so yeah, items like this, you're already at 20% cooldown with these. That's when you can sort of get like either the relic daggers or the witch blades, things like that. Um, and you can top it off with something. It like you can go a lot of things on him because you can build a little bit, maybe like hybridy. You can get something like an ethereal staff, or like I said, like stone abiding. It it falls off later game. It's more for like that early thing, early game because it's only 1,700. You get it as like your first or second item, and then you like sell it late game for something else that's a little bit better right um so if you did get it like think late game when you have your full items sell stone of binding to maybe upgrade your sentinel's gift or to buy another item or something like that um you can get things like mantle of discord it'll just make you even tankier um with something like this with builds like this um and then obviously you see some of these other ones um breastplate's okay on him um breastplate of valor but that's more like a um if you're running out of mana a lot if you find yourself um and normally at lower levels is actually like a pretty good item um if you want you can build a breastplate and get a full 40 percent cooldown with this in pridwin um you'll have the mana sustain with it so you'll be able to sit there and just like tremor crap forever um and not have the same mana problems which is normally like oh hey i run out of mana a lot you can see how fast my mana bar goes down to this with this is with breastplate of valor so that's the extra 300 and, and all that stuff um, but with breastplate, you're getting the the MP5. You're you have the cooldown reductions, right? So you're normally able to regenerate it. Still use your abilities more. So if you find yourself running out of uh, mana and stuff for abilities, maybe getting breastplate like here or something uh, would be a good idea. You can do like a breastplate Pridwin. It's fine, but you're helping your team out more if you get something like sovereignty, right? Um, yeah. And then obviously, if they have crit, you can finish off with a spectral armor. Um, if you're really getting chunked by that because you're going to be kind of in the front line, High the Nemean isn't bad either. Just against like really strong physical gods. Um, things like Pestilence is great. Um, you can get other things like Talisman of Energy for um, getting those assists and being able to run people down more. It's going to give you um, that movement speed and that attack speed and everything like that. So you'll be able to chase people down. It's a pretty good item if somebody else already has 
pestilence right hardware amulet always like a decent item as well for helps your team out it's basically like the magical version of a sovereignty um and stuff like that so yeah um if you want to build kabraken more damage like uh i think the items that synergize on him the most in things like solo lane or in the jungle is going to be um lifesteal uh so things like bancroft's talon and typhon's fang um, because you're able to do damage to people, heal up, and then use your tremors and kind of heal through a lot of damage, especially if you're ahead. Um, and then things like Polynomicon, using an ability gives your next basic attack with the next eight seconds, 75% of your magical power, right? So you're able to chase somebody down with your one, hit them with your one, get that free auto there. That Pridwin is going to like smack the crap out of them, right? Or sorry, Polynomicon. Um, so yeah. Basically, after you use an ability, your next auto is going to do that extra damage to them, right? And and his one counts as that basic attack, right? That's the big thing about this is you see that extra 220 there. Um, 263. And you use the auto. So you, you can see the, the Polynomicon working right there. I think it's the 51, actually. The 220 is the... Um, uh the damage like the actual damage from it um pridwin activates afterwards so it's yeah it's the extra 51 um but it will activate with it right and then as you get more powerful pridwin is going to hit a lot harder um so things like these are good on them uh solo lane ethereal staff uh if you're doing a jungle building something like this uh is going to be really good so the bancroft's talon uh some of these items bancroft's talon plus typhon's fang Plus Polynomicon, and then getting things like um, Rod Tahuti, and then like an Obsidian Shard, like things like this, you're going to chunk people pretty hard. Um, this will be a lot of penetration for them between these two. This is 10, 20, uh, plus another 20%, that's 40, plus the passive of this. When you run up to somebody and you smack them, you're going to do so much damage with that poly. You're now at like 345 with, for the poly, right? So just doing this and autoing after your two, right? Uh, even your, like your trembles, like 211 a tremble. Uh, you're going to be healing through all this stuff, right? Um, and after every single one of your abilities, that Polynomicon's proccing, you're going to do a lot of burst damage. So this is like some traditional stuff for, with him, um, the way you kind of want to build him. And this last item's choice, right? Um, you can get a little bit of defense if you want at the end of here. You can get even more power. If you need Divine Rune, you can fit it in there somewhere. Uh, if you're attacking them, things like Spear of the Magus is really good on him. Um, you don't have a lot of cooldown on here, so you could build something like a Kronos Pendant uh, or like a Spear of Desolation or something just to get a little bit of cooldown. But he already has sort of like lower cooldowns, and your mission as a Jungle Cabracken is you're just going to run up to somebody and literally like delete them off the face of the earth and then like get out of there. It's like kind of what you do as Cabracken. Um, so yeah, that's the basics of Cabracken. Um, if you guys haven't, uh, please subscribe and um, like this video because I will be coming out with new god guides um, as we go on. We just got into C with Cabracken and everything like that. We will eventually get to the Zs, just not yet. Someday though, someday. Um, and then uh, we also ran a Smite Discord server called the Smite Dojo. I will leave the link in the description below. Feel free to click that Discord link. Come join our Discord server. We teach people how to play Smite. We play Smite with anybody of all skill levels. No judgment, no toxicity. We just love playing Smite. Doesn't matter if we win, lose. It doesn't matter if you're amazing at Smite or if you suck at Smite. Like, we want to play with you guys. We just want to create a really great environment for people to play it, have fun, enjoy themselves. Um, so feel free to join that Discord server. Um, and then, yeah, I will be coming out with more videos um, in the future. And then we're going to be doing a whole item guide. So I know I'm talking about all these items and you're like, how do I know what to build? How do I know which gods it's good on, etc.? We're going to be doing like a whole three hour video on that. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, and yeah, uh, if you guys think I missed something or if you think uh, there's another tip or trick you'd like to add to it, feel free to comment down below. Let me know what that is and let the community know. So when they watch this video, they see those extra tips and tricks. Um, so Hopefully this is just like a great learning space to learn how to play Cabracken. Um, and then also if you have better builds and, and some sort of build orders and stuff like that, also feel free to put this down um, in, in the comments below. Let us know what you think the optimal build on Cabracken is and what role that's for, right? Specify what role it is. Um, so yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.